I'm, uh, I'm in Nepal. Uh, sorry for the quality of the voice. Uh, and uh, I understand. Uh, um, maybe it doesn't work, uh, Michael. So let's just fix. The network is very good. Prediction across multiple stores mm -hmm. and uh, assuming the. Is that what? Hello? Yeah, I think we didn't hear anything. Hello? Uh, we didn't hear anything you said. So. Anyone else? Just yes? Yeah. Uh, my understanding, I think the objective in this week challenge is to be able to forecast sales uh, in different stores. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if it's my my audio or did you finish just yes yes uh, it's just the objective okay okay Emmanuel okay I think uh, the fixed task uh, deals with prediction of uh, pharma uh, pharmaceutical sales uh, for a company called Rosman pharmaceuticals so uh, we have been uh, we have been given with uh, pre-identified uh, factors that uh, determine sales, uh, such as promotions, competition, uh, school and state holidays, seasonality and locality. Uh, on top of that, managers in individual stores, uh, they also forecast sales based on their uh, years of experience in personal judgments. So by combining those, we are, we are uh, we are demanded that uh, we write a program that predicts future seats. Yep, I think that summarizes it quite nicely. Um, great. So, I think that's exactly what it is. In some way, nowadays, you 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 have a very good kind of same understanding. You must understand what the business objective is, and the business objective is in this case. You want to help, um, you know, uh, Rosman is a pharmaceutical, which has lots of brands and the managers, they want to understand, of course, the, the expect and also the distributors uh, would like to know, you know, where sales happens, because if they know that, they, you know, if there's predicted load in, in some uh, stores, then they would basically stock in there. Right, so there is a, a lot of use for predicting sales uh, from planning management to actually also kind of uh, understanding, you know, reporting to your, um, to your, um, uh, whoever is like the owner, like, you know, just profits, margins, and, and, and around that planning. And on top of that, also probably doing some kind of intervention if expected grows is you know to increase uh, expected growth so you know where do you want to give promotions what kind of promotions has worked and therefore you know um, for all those kind of reasons right so that's what the business objective really it's simple and understandable but you know there are lots of just to, to do sales prediction there are a number of things that you have to understand that's what this few this um, challenge is the data is given, it comes from Kaggle. You can absolutely get a lots of Kaggle um, notebooks and you can learn from you know what other people do, different type of algorithms as well. But of course, ultimately it's your work which shines, not uh, what you copied. So try to understand them, just don't copy um, simply, but understand and then you know learn everything from um, the best Kaggle notebooks as well. Um, and Basically, just these are all the usual, um, and we will definitely look into your 
testing, logging, and dashboard, and also versioning in terms of data model and um, um, so the, the code. So that's basically the three versioning, and there will be, but always, of course, all of this uh, dashboard, whatever, you will be only submitting it as either part of your, you know, in the submission um, in the in the report, or like you can attach any evidence, like screenshots, whatever, either in the report or GitLab, GitHub uh, submissions. But also there would be, we would look at the your SQL just uh, as a feature store for your models and for your basically the dashboard that would allow. And that's basically continuation in terms of this code data model versioning from uh, from last week, as well as also it's just basically you're building uh, and, and playing with different um, models and algorithms. Uh, so this is a machine learning, again, project. So the part, there is a significant part in customer exploration of customer purchase behavior. This is really key. And in many companies, that's what you do most of the time. And then there is also associated, then once you understand that prediction of store sales using machine learning approach that you have used already and deep learning approach, which is for time series because sales is a time series. That means it depends on time. And from time to time, it also varies and it has certain seasonality. It has certain, you know, uh, hourly cycles and many other cycles. So, so you will learn about that. So you would also use a deep learning approach in this case, LSTM to be able to uh, model so your first part uh, is really if you do it well here to understand then you do it well in other parts because a lot of the understanding comes from the exploration of customers purchasing behavior and for that one you have to check really the distribution both in the training and in the test uh, the promotions distributed sales behavior during and after holidays um, and holidays you know you have to basically define what holidays this is a European data, so that means uh, much more of the holidays associated are related to European holidays. Find uh, Christmas, seasonal, basically Christmas, Easter, and other. So these are sometimes non-linear in a way like, for example, uh, Christmas is fine, it's December, I mean, all of, both of them are fine, but in terms of day, December 25, every day, every uh, year doesn't happen on the same, for example, on Sunday. Some others are on Sundays, you know, constant, so uh, or like that. But these ones are not sometimes, and also there are leap years and stuff, so it's not uniform. What can you say about correlation between sales and number of customers? Whether promos affect sales? Whether you know um, there are different effective ways to for promotion? Your uh, observation and suggestion, and a number of other things in terms of like the type of. Uh, the assortment type if it uh, affects sales for that means in terms of like different stores have different characteristics so those um, you know some are small some are large some are medium some only for a certain drug some you know some some only like that and then also there are competitors so depending on whether the distance to the next competitor affects sales and all of that okay and then also pay attention into a centralized logging that means you know your model ultimately when it's deployed when a, you know when a, a manager uses it it should be able to log carefully that means if something happens um you know your log should be able to it should be accountable right so the log should be you should think about your logging as well at least use logging library but you know um that's that's one and then the pre-processing part um there is a number because you have to convert the date probably into weekdays weekends and then also number uh, number of days to holidays, number of days after holiday, and like that. Okay. Building models with SQL and pipeline. I think you have already done that, or you you should keep using that. It's just that if it's a pipeline, adding a new type of pre-processing will not affect. So that's you know the, the part that you should be thinking uh, pipeline, and then also the type you know you have to choose the loss function. And then also post prediction analysis. Sometimes after you make your model, you can improve your model by, let's say, exactly expert opinion or some form of, uh, if it's really predicting uh, higher outliers, you can also uh, have a max cut, for example, or a low cut, something that, that you can do. That's called post prediction analysis or post model analysis. And then also serialization of your model such that you can actually 
do it into, you know, you, you have to assume that this model, as you get more data, it's being updated. So you should be able to have like exactly model versioning and you should roll back to, in principle to a previous model. Um, and so it's basically how you deploy your model, uh, how you experiment, and then how you deploy a model. It, that structure is essential. And then of course, the building the model um, and then using ML flow, for example, just for your artifacts, including, you know, the models accuracy, whatever, if you want to compare, you should be able to use ML flow um, and also then serving predictions on the web interface. So that's the dashboard uh, part. Okay. And there will be tutorials uh, today on time series data exploration. And then there will be also machine learning sales forecast by Edidia and then deep learning for uh, sales forecast by Azaria and then uh, hosting with Heroku. But I would really recommend not only Heroku, I think Heroku sometimes gets very small, but there is NetFly uh, as well as also the, if you are building it in um, um, Streamlit, then you can also host it in Streamlit so you can diversify and there are a number of others. So as long as you deploy it, that would be great. Um, yeah, so is there anything that is not clear from here? Any question? Fasa. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ababa. Uh, my question is, is it just a recommendation or uh, a requirement to use Heroku? No, for it's not a requirement at all. It's just uh, from like one recommendation, one one place. But it's not, it's just basically, I mean, I think it was from the past that that was easier, but now there are many you can use. So use whatever is convenient. Uh, okay. I mean, Thank we you. wanted Heroku in the past much more because it involves the CI CD full. So if you are deploying it um, in others, I don't know. But it, again, now you can do it. So it's okay. So whatever oh. is convenient to model, uh, to deploy. Okay. I think that answers my uh, second question, which was why you actually recommended Heroku. But I think that that answers the question why okay. thank you Mohammed. uh can you hear me yes so um my first question is what are the things that we should reuse from uh, the past two weeks from what uh, my second from the past two week one and week two and uh, my second question is uh in terms of are learning new subjects and topics. What what type of learning you should do? Is it uh, the body and, and the what type of learning? Learning? what type of learning? Should we go deep and dig uh, to know more about the topic or we should uh, know how to implement the topic and uh, forget about the, uh, the external and uh, the deep information about the topic? Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you are, your voice was not that much audible, but as far as I understand, uh, your, your first question is related to your second, if I start from your second question, it is what kind of learning that I think the most important part you could learn is if you like what, you know, and the first question is that what can you use from your two weeks? Absolutely. If you have written your code modular, if you reuse much more of the EDAs that you used, you know, for some of the things that would be great, right? And then the other part, so it's basically, and then also ML flow deployment, whatever, you shouldn't be now wasting time again, because you must have already some form of code that wraps that and you just reuse it. So if you could you reuse data versioning, model versioning um, from the previous ones, that would be, that is kind of what's considered modular. If you can reuse it, that's why last week was also exactly like that. So you can modularize it like that. Um, and the other element is, it is uh, the learning part is, can you think of this thing as a continuously serving? Because you have to know data is coming and it's not just one time, you know, you predict something sales comes and you have to compare whether your model was performing. 
So being able to really set up a, a more pipeline that in one part you are experimenting to improve the modeling, in the other part you are adding new data to your model and then you are producing regularly uh, this model. And so that, that kind of engineering pipeline, you know, as an engineer, when you say machine learning engineer, it's really about building end to end that basically requires less maintenance or even if it's maintenance, other people can maintain. It's fully documented, it's highly pipelined, that it is well taught in terms of pipeline, you know, in terms of how, you know, how the data comes in, how data is pre-processed, what experimentation are there, and then feature stores are there that it checks that some things are not breaking the system or data drift. You can also check a data drift that basically means like, are there now more data from one place instead of like what you expect that it should come and things like that you set up. Um, so it's about designing that. So that's a learning part mostly. And then the EDA is the EDA. Does that answer your question, Mohamed? Oh, um my first question is well answered but uh, my second question i think that you misunderstood it um i, I think I, I i mean by a new topic uh, like uh what what we will study this week uh, is deep learning yeah. uh in yes. terms of knowing new topics uh that we presented every week should we go and dig uh, deep into that topic or we should know how to use it and uh, let uh, that deep knowledge for the uh, for the next days or for the next weeks. Yeah, absolutely. So it would be again, you know, it's a balance act between time and new exploration, right? So one one part is absolutely there is also a, a part of more uh, concepts that is kind of serializing multiple data sets, managing. If you haven't done so, then this should be one and another one i think i think in terms of actual concepts the deep learning lstm again this takes so long time uh, as long as you know how to use it on on job you would make it better but by whatever capacity that you have the more you learn about lstm uh, and how you model it that would be great okay okay great uh la one last question uh yeah. what we should do to bias time, uh, in your perspective, what you, what uh, we should do to address the project and yes. save us time to uh, to do all of the tasks. Planning. There's only one thing. You just plan how to connect them. So you spend really good time, um, kind of planning what are the things that you have done already and which code you can reuse them. And basically then you allocate some time, for example, let's say just time bounded. Um, and then you spend, for example, one day critically understanding the different elements that you don't understand or you haven't uh, grasped. And then I think it's much more, it's time bound. So you have to plan it time bound way. That means, you know, you should end up by Thursday, basically all the elements kind of created and then it's the digestion that means like the kind of the exploration, whatever you will have time. And at the same time, when you do it, start writing just in your notebook, whatever, just really do you know, kind of put your a slight effort to recur to what you are doing. Because either you tell when you are telling people or when you are writing it, it's the actual knowledge. You start helping you for the next task. So I would say planning is the key. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so I think that's unfortunately I have to go, but hopefully that is that answers your question. And if there are any others that I will, will check also on Slack. So please type it in Slack. Thank you, everyone. Bye. And Ten Academy, please, you can stop the recording. <laughs>